Welcome to labmins.com. In this video, we will be focusing on installing Cisco Virtual Security Gateway or VSG in high availability layer 3 mode. And during the process, we will register the VSG to the VNMC. Here, assume that you already have some basic knowledge of VSG. If not, I encourage you to watch our video Introduction to VSG and VNMC before proceeding with this lab. Here's our lab setup. Here we have two ESXi servers, ESXi1 and ESXi2 that we will be using. We already have a Nexus 1000V installed in layer 3 mode. On the VSG, there are three interfaces. Each is mapped to a separate VLAN. And the first VLAN is VSG Data 114. This is where the Data 0 interface in the VSG is connected to. And VSG uses this interface to communicate with all the VM and establish VPath. Since we're doing layer 3 for this connection, on the VEMs, you need to make sure you have a VM kernel. And if you are running layer 3 between VSM and VEM already, you can reuse the same VM kernel interface, just like we do here, where the port profile should already have a capability layer 3 control. And now to have to use that same VM kernel to talk to VSG, you're going to have to add a capability layer 3 V service, which you will see in a second here. And of course, you can also create a separate VM kernel interface just for that purpose as well. Now the second VLAN is VSG Management 115. This is where interface management zero on the VSG is connected to, and VSG is using the interface to talk to vCenter. And this is an interface where you SSH into the VSG as well. Now the third interface or VLAN is VSG HA for high availability 116, and this is when you have redundant pair of VSG. So it would use this VLAN to communicate heartbeats and synchronizations for failover. And we're going to be using a dot 16 IPs on each of these corresponding VLANs on all the interfaces in the VSG. Now on the right here we have a vCenter server at the dot five on the VLAN 32 and we also have a domain control as well as our jump box at the IP of dot 40 here on the same VLAN 32. Here's some prerequisites before we start this lab. First at this point you need to make sure that you have all your ESXi hosts added to the vCenter as well as having the Nexus 1000V and VNMC server install. And you also need to download the VSG software package from uh, Cisco.com as well. And I just want to make a quick note that since VM will be talking to VSG across layer 3, you want to make sure that the default gateway for the VM kernel interface of the VEM has the proxy ARP turned on because when VEM wants to get out of the subnet, it doesn't really use the default gateway that you have configured on the ESXi, but instead it's just going to ARP for the VSG IPs. So make sure that, for example, for us is the VLAN interface 113, you need to have the IP proxy ARP turned on. And I'll make sure I'll reiterate that in the future video when we are ready to do the, or make a connection between VM and the VSG. Here to start our configuration, first, we need to create these three VLANs on the Nexus 1000V. So here, if you jump into the console, or the command line of the Nexus 1000V, the first VLAN we'll create is VLAN 114, and we'll name it VSG Data. Second VLAN is 115, and we'll name it VSG Management. And third VLAN is 116, the name is VSG HA. Okay, then we mentioned that we need to add the capability layer 3 or L3V service to the port profile with the VM is using, or for the VM kernel. And our port profile is called VMK control. Actually, before we actually start uh, configure that, let me do show run port profile. You can see here so far we don't have capability L3 control. So now we're going to add capability L3. Let's see what's at the options. Here we have right there, L3 V service, L3 V service. Okay, now we're gonna to have to configure each of the port profile for the VSG interfaces. So let's see if we can quickly copy, let's see, one of the port profile that we have already for, let's say the Nexus 1 KV. This one should do it right here. We bring up Notepad, paste, and we'll change this to VLAN 114, and make a quick note here as VSG data. This will become 114, and we'll make sure this is a system VLAN as well. So 114, 
and then we have 115 and that is BSG management 115 115 and the last one is 116 which is BSG HA 6 and 6 copy that and paste and now we have to add these three VLANs to our uplinks and now uplink port profile is called uplink VM so right here let's copy this out and there's just there going to be a slight modification so as far as the allow VLAN we want to add 114 through 116 and for the system VLAN we want to extend that to 116 and make sure we just put those two commands in there okay copy paste just make sure uh, what we just put in is actually there okay 116 116 so that looks good and this one more thing you want to do is to modify the MTU of the uplink since when VM talks to the VSG using VPath, there's actually encapsulations that's going on and VPath actually added not additional 94 bytes to the header. So you, you definitely want to make sure that you adjust MTU accordingly. And so there's no packet drop. So by default, MTU is 1500, which is to add 94 into that. So it's become 1594. And you definitely need to make sure that the upstream switch has the matching config as well. And so you guys need to do that. Let me bring up the upstream switch. And here we have a 3750 switch. You can see as you put the MTU command, the port actually bounced. So make sure that's something that you have to do. You schedule it after hours or during the maintenance windows. But if you do show system MTU, you can see we have a matching MTU size with the 1594 on the upstream physical switch. Okay, now that we have all the port, the three port profiles configured, we can start installing our VSG. So here on our vCenter, we're going to deploy that from the .ova file from the package you download. Here you point it to a Nexus 1000 VVSG 1.4.1. That's our version. So open. Next. Take a quick note, it's going to be 3 gig for thick provision. Click next, we'll accept, and then next. Here we have to give it a name. So for this one we'll call, since we're going to be using it for a tenant one, uh, tenant one, let's call it something like tenant one VSG one PRI for the primary, since we're going to be installing a secondary in a minute. If you've gone through the Nexus 1000V install, this options right here looks very similar. You can do standalone, primary, secondary, or you can manually con configure the VSG. Here we're going to choose the manually configure option. We'll click next. Then we'll select the host or ESXi host that we want to install it on. We'll select uh, .4, which is our ESXi 1. Click next. We'll select our iSCSI data store. And we want to do thick provisions. So we'll leave it at that default. And now this is where you map the interface to the port profile that we configured just now. So the data is going to be on VLAN 114 VSG data. Management is going to be on 115 and HA is 116. Okay. Since we're going to be manually configuring the VSG, there's no need for us to actually fill in these page right here. So we can just click next and skip on that. And now click finished and power on after deployment. Okay, so the deployment is completed, so let's close that and open up the console. And we'll give it a few more minutes for that to boot up. And we are now prompted for the admin password, so we'll type in the password that you want to use. And now we have to choose the role. You have standalone, primary, and secondary, since we're going to do HA pair, and this is our first node, it's going to be primary. And HAID, you're going to keep it simple to 1. And we're going to choose to do the basic configuration, so type yes. We do not want to create another login account. We do not want to configure any SNMP right now. We're going to leave the name by default VSG, since uh, when we add this to VNMC, we have the chance to control the, the name, the host name from there. 
for the other band management, yes, we want to configure that. And the IP that we say we're going to use is 172.16, and management VLAN is 115. And the last octet is 16, so 115.16. Subnet mass is slash 24. And yes, we want to configure the gateway. And the gateway is 115.1. DNS address is skip that. Telnet, no. NTP, no. Policy agent, definitely want to. So we can register the VSG to the VNMC. Okay, for the VNMC IP, we said it's going to be 172.16.32.32. And the share secret is Cisco, complex Cisco. And then for the policy agent image, we're going to use the default that the VSG has selected for us. And we said we do not want to edit the config, and yes, we want to save the config. Okay, so the lock-in prompt, let's lock in. And then let's try to ping the default gateway of the management interface. 162.16.115, just to make sure we have connectivity. And let's forget to specify the VRF. And yes, we can ping, so we know we have connectivity. And we can do show to check the policy agent status. Show VNM-PA status. And here it says successfully or install successfully. Since we have the connectivity, we can SSH to the VSG. So I already have a profile in PuTTY created. Click yes. Admin. And then we lock in. And now you can see we can SSH to the VSG. Just to make sure we don't time out in the process, let's do line VTY and then change the exact timeout to zero. So we stay connected. And now if you lock into the VNMC and check the status of the VSG, we can go to administration, service registry, and client. You can see in addition to the VSM that we have already have registered to the VNMC, we also now have the VSG on our list, it said register, the version 201A. And if you go to the resource management, resource management resources, and then down below you have a firewall. And here we have our VSG, you can see that the VSG we just installed showed up here as well. Okay, next we're gonna install our secondary VSG. So we're gonna follow the same pretty much the same installation process with the deploy OVA or OVF. We use the same OVA. Click next, accept. Here we'll call it uh, tenant one, VSG one, SEC for secondary. And now we can install it as a secondary. Click next, we'll choose our ESXi1 to install it on. Next, again, iSCSI storage, thick provision, and then we'll map the interface. So start off with 114, then 115, and 116. Okay, click next, and now we have to give it the same HAID as the primary, same admin password, and the rest of it, it was just gonna pull config from the primary. So click next, and finish. Okay, deployment is done. So let's open now VSG command line here, and we know the secondary is still probably booting up, so before it fully comes up, let's do uh, show redundancy status. And you can see right here, you have the administrative uh, role of primary. And sup one's active, sup two is not present since the uh, secondary VSG is probably is still booting up. So let's open the console so we can look at the boot up process. And I can see it's just basically bootstrapping 
using the parameter that we enter. And now I just went through another reboot. So once it fully boot, it should be up and running just in a few more minutes here. Okay, now the fact that we are getting a lock-in prompt, I would assume the secondary is up already. You can see also there's a lock message right here that said module two is detected. And if you up error and you show redundancy status one more time, and now under the soup two section, we can see the redundancy status standby with the HA standby and Looks like it's not fully synced yet, so a synchronized session in progress. And now I can see it's just turned into a HA standby. Okay, so although we have a secondary install, but as far as the VNMC is concerned, if we go back, it's still show up as a single VSG, although it said the role is primary. So if the primary failed, it should have turned to a secondary, but both of them would not register to the VNMC at the same time. You can see that the concept and procedures of installing VSG are very similar to installing a VSM in layer 3 mode, and there's even potential for them to share the same VLANs. Now that we have installed a VSG and registered it to VNMC, we can move on to the VSG configuration. So that's pretty much wraps up our video on VSG layer 3 installation. You can sign up on our website to receive updates on our latest lab videos and get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labmints.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.